Hey there, Lorraine here with a little wrap up on day two of the Materiality Marathon. I'm gonna describe this as both productive and existentially paradoxical. And I'll explain a bit more of both of those things in a way that I hope is useful. I've gotten some great questions and suggestions. Um, and if there's ways I can make these recaps more useful since I am essentially just inventing a process, I certainly welcome your feedback. So um, I'll start with the productive part and then we'll get to the paradox in a minute. Productive, uh, so as you know, on the second slide, I keep a little kind of daily table of what my intentions are. Today, Tuesday, the intention was to uh, get to the leadership messaging, looking at the investor calls, and also to tidy up the last interview. So I'm gonna start with that second part. If you click here, it takes you to slide 11. And I wanna just highlight what's here and um, then that'll wade me into the, the paradox, the existential challenge. So um, I was able to complete the um, transcripts and all the links in uh, Becca Morahan's interview, which is really interesting. I strongly recommend if you're, I, these are all really interesting. I've already highlighted a few, but this one, just having added it um, today, I wanna emphasize really great on the ground experience working with smallholder farmers, particularly with a lens on uh, empowering women, which is a really big priority for Deno. And so it was interesting just to talk through that relationship piece with farmers. She's got some great insights. Um, and then the other thing that wasn't totally up to date at the end of day yesterday was just the transcript for the one anonymous stakeholder who um, you can nonetheless see their introduction and their context where they fit within the um, the ecosystem of people who might have a point of view on Danone. I just want to draw your attention to this link, which only goes to a written transcript, no video or audio. Um, so that was a big part of the, the steps taken today. Let me just go back to that second slide and ease us into the existential journey. So um, looking at the leadership messages, and here right now, you're just gonna see a bunch of links. I have grabbed some of the recent transcripts. These are all free. Anybody can go to Seeking Alpha. You can pay for a premium subscription, which I have done and I have not done, but you can still access all of this without needing that. And uh, again, let me just get my head out of the way, which is probably a key theme. I need to just get my head out of the way on this because it's all very intense. But let me just quickly talk through some of what's been coming up for me as I go through the materials and it's sparked by some of the um, stakeholder conversations, but it's things that I've been noticing in the wider world anyway. And it's part of what makes me really want to take a close look at this company because I think Denone, um, in many ways, they are leaders among their peer group in sort of global companies and certainly in global food companies. And yet, so a couple things. Um, one, in that conversation with Becca, in fact, you can see when she's doing the stakeholder ranking, um, that initially her point of view is to rank them quite high. And let's just uh, go and have a look there. So she initially actually ranked them up in the upper right quadrant. When I asked her to kind of remember her earlier remarks in the conversation and then come back to the ranking, sure enough, it was kind of obvious that this is a company that is not yet contributing um, to overall wellness. They're, they're still part of the undermining paradigm, if you will. So that in and of itself is tricky, this notion of like, here's a company that in many ways is out in front of its peers, um, and yet, you know, it's leading within a lagging <laughs> construct. So what do we do about that? And then the other piece, uh, which really kind of builds on that, and this is where I see it in the investor calls and I just had to step away and just take my hands off the wheel and go for a walk by the river actually, um, is the awareness that, so for example, if we go into Judy Schwartz's um, conversation, the stakeholder interview, she's a, a journalist, she's written a number of books, she has gone deep into the research and the practitioners of a, of a range of um, ways of producing food and and being in relation to the land. Um, and one of the comments she makes quite clearly is her concern about Danone's strategic play around a plant-based diet and their growth in the plant-based business unit. And then we come to Anonymous's conversation and they come from a perspective of uh, working with investors, analyzing investments for uh, the sort of sustainability factors, etc. And they've got tremendous education, context, background, 
from the global south now operating in a European context, so quite a global perspective. And yet their perspective is where we need to go is towards more of a plant-based diet. I talk about a bit of an existential challenge um, because I look at this and I, you know, I could have an opinion. I do have an opinion. Um, and then I could just keep kind of linking out to different sources that have totally different points of view. And then just as a human and as an eater, I've gone through my own evolution on this. And I'm quite sure if I'd had these conversations five years ago, I would feel very differently than I feel today. And so meanwhile, we have real work to do to restore ecosystems and to restore human health. So I have a lot more uh, digging to do in terms of where, uh, you know, what the leadership is saying on all of this. <clears throat> the former CEO, Emmanuel Faber, his 2020 recaps about a year before he was walked out the door, um, the investor earnings call, he talks about regenerative agriculture in quite a bit of detail. It's mentioned 10 times, but a year later, it is not mentioned once. Um, regen ag, it, regenerative agriculture is literally not mentioned one time. There is mention of carbon, but it's more about signing on to various initiatives. And then from there, there's rapid fire change in leadership. There's an interim co-CEO situation. And then um, in the fall of 2021, which I really had trouble keeping up. You'll see in the interviews, I, it was confusing. There was, when I was setting up the interview transcripts, I looked up who was the CEO and I was doing that all in 2022. I don't, I don't know what happened, <laughs> to be honest. I just screwed up. All to say there's this swirl of, you know, do we really improve our status as humanity in a hopefully improving and getting healthier biosphere by moving towards a plant-based diet, it seems unlikely if that is based on commodity mono monocrops with intensive inputs that damage the soil um, and potentially damage our guts. So there's lots to find out, but I feel like I'm coming out of today um, really tired really tired of trying to hold this global food puzzle and understand what the company is saying and why they're saying it and what stakeholders think needs to be done. And I know it's not my job to solve this on their behalf, uh, but I would like to create some really meaningful uh, conclusions and ideas and offer meaningful analysis that perhaps folks at Danone would find useful and others as well. So right now, I guess I'm still sort of widening my arms and embracing the complexity and leaning into the diversity of perspective and not needing to force one pathway. All to say, um, I'm excited about the next few days. So uh, on that note, what comes next? So uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, my focus will be on trying to continue learning and understanding what can be said at the strategic and sort of senior management level, as well as going deeper into the Global South perspective. And there's lots of pieces separate from materiality that are happening that are going to help me with that. Just coincidentally, the way my week's cookie is crumbling. Um, and I'm just going to keep going. Thanks again for your feedback, ideas, and uh, encouragement.